Welcome back to Watches Live, the only show we shoot here on Watchbox Reviews. Thank you for joining me. Tonight, the theme is a little bit of everything. I've got grand comps, I've got simple watches, I have sports watches, I have dress watches, I have big watches and small, I have German, German Swiss, French Swiss, and one watch with dual citizenship, which we shall discuss in a moment. First, let me thank all my friends who are joining in from Far Flung. I'm going to give you something for your troubles. We are giving away a Seiko Astron GPS Solar. It's my $1,600 October giveaway watch. So I want to put a trick or a treat in your Halloween bag. Check the description. That's the link. All right, Dr. T, Philip Hayden, Angus P, Jan Wilhelm Koster, David D, Tom P, Eddie Landsberg, and Rebel Fan. Welcome. Welcome, Rebel, from Mississippi. I think that's our first shout out from Mississippi. S4, thank you for joining us from Kuwait, and of course Santos from Tokyo, and Justin from Texas. Let's jump right in. Okay, super watches. The literal definition of a super watch in the modern age is Richard Mille, and in 2007, RM wowed us with the RM11, the watch that has come to symbolize the company. It has grown more refined over the years, but if you were to say, Name me, among the innumerable variants, the one name always associated with the RM11 flyback chronograph annual calendar, it would be Felipe Massa. The sometimes Ferrari Formula One driver inspired this particular variant, which is a weird combination of titanium, as you can see on the flank, and 18 karat white gold, as you can see on the faceplate, as well as the case back. Now, RMAC1, 55 hour power reserve, automatic winding, unique, full titanium skeletonized set of bridges and plates. What sets this watch apart is the combination of outlandish appearance with outstanding ergonomics. Yes, it's a flyback chronograph. Yes, it's shockproof. Yes, it's weirdly combining two white metals, base and precious. And yes, it's an annual calendar, but look at that case form. This is what people think of when they think of Richard Mille. They think of a tonneau, a case form originally associated with first, third, 20th century vintage wristwatches from the earliest stage of the wristwatch, revived by Franck Muller in the early 90s, but RM owns this design today, and I'm gonna to prove to you that this watch may be complicated, but it's no big bully. I'm gonna give you a wrist shot. Okay, Roberto, welcome aboard. The Mr. Tango, Noah from New York City, Alexei Simola from Finland, and Edward Ledden from Sweden saying he loves this watch. You know, so do I, and it's a perfect fit. It's not as big as you might imagine. Let's talk about the fit here. Lug to lug, the watch is 50.6 millimeters, which means on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it doesn't even come close to overhanging the edge of my wrist. It's also not terribly broad. From nine o'clock to three o'clock across the case, it's about 41.5 millimeters. So it's 41 and a half millimeters across, not including the crown. It is thick, 16.2, but maybe not as thick as you'd imagine given those sheer sides. And being effectively half titanium and mostly, let's face it, made of air. It's a big open prism that sits fairly light on the wrist, but look at the form of the case. Look how it hugs the wrist from side to side. It's that cambered tonneau form that really makes the ergonomic experience of a Richard Mille something pleasant, pleasurable, and almost effortless. I can tell you, most large watches don't wear this comfortably and this naturally. It feels like a second skin. And let's remember, this is a watch that offers everything, sports watch internals, sports watch appearance, a designer brand that I'm told is co-equal these days with Rolex and Patek Philippe. This is something else, but Patek, the traditionalist, does have an answer. And what could be a more forceful answer than another white metal, complicated calendar chronograph, the late great 5970 in white gold. I will raise you a Le Mans 2310 Geneva Hallmark Finist Mr. Richard. You can see this watch 40 millimeters, though it looks larger. Part of a family that debuted in 2004 and was discontinued after 2010. Four models, three golds, and one platinum. So four different models. The thought is roughly 2,500 to 3,000 examples made. And this is why you want a manual wind lateral clutch chronograph, because it keeps no secrets. You can see that lateral clutch, by the way, fully jeweled, no bushings on this example, moving out of contact and into contact. Moreover, you can see the column wheel, Geneva capped, black polished screw, and the recentering hammers, which act on the heart cams at center. 
This is the advantage of a manual wind, old-fashioned lateral clutch chronograph. Why do you want old-school slow beat 2.5 hertz balance? Because it's just cool. Look at that thing. It's almost one-third the diameter of the entire CH2770 movement. And yes, if you own this watch, you must buy a loop, a good loop, because it's worthwhile. Check out the dial, though. There's plenty to love on the front side of this watch. Black oxidized foyer leaf style hands as well as indices, and a gorgeous satin, almost ruthenium gray dial. This one is a stealth bomber. But there are those for whom gold must be colored gold, and I got one for you too. 5970R. A warmer, kinder, perhaps more tropical, Miami-oriented 5070 iteration. This one's for your Sunset Strip, your French or Italian Riviera. It's for Santa Monica Pier, and you know what? It's for my old haunt down in Miami. If you're cruising under the neon lights on Miami Beach, this is exactly the watch to light up the scene. Beautifully finished on the back, you can see a combination of satin finish on the levers of the chronograph, Cote de Genève across the bridges, there's a perlage on the base plate, all screw heads are black polished, and if I can turn it flush, you can see how the edges of those bridges and levers light up. That is mirrored, rounded, hand-laid beveling. No machined bevels here. This is all executed by hand. A year's work well invested by a couple of Patek Philippe artisans. And of course, the dial of this one, a little bit less chilly than the white gold. Same opaline finish, but not quite as dark with rose gold accents and hands at center. By the way, how expressive is that case? 40 millimeters and an absolute titan of style and form. Sinuous, curvaceous, strong, and masculine. It achieves a lot without being overblown, overdone, or oversized. Bump a bump. Edward is a fan of that Patek. And I think Ryan H. is saying that's the Hannibal Lecter watch. Did Hannibal live that well? Apparently he cashed the check before he ate them, didn't he? And I can see right here, BSA and Timon bringing out some heavy hitters today. You know what? You haven't seen the half of it. I got some seriously heavy metal on the table tonight. By popular demand, I was asked to bring a minute repeater. I brought the best one I've got in the inventory. In 2005, JLC went big with their big piece. 44 millimeters in platinum, 200 pieces. The minute repeater, master minute repeater, Antoine Lecoult. A gorgeous platinum watch with an open dial. You can see at the top, the rack and snail. You can see the strike barrel. By the way, they skeletonized the strike barrel and the spokes are the JL logo. And then you can see the chimes. I'm gonna fire this one up and I'm gonna bring it right up to my microphone. But before I do, check out this case back, like a longa, Cote de Soleil, explosive sunburst Cote de Genève, full balance bridge, hand engraved, and you'll note blued screws, both of the mainspring barrels set in chiton, completely unfinished gold and nickel copper zinc alloy, and the inked signature hand engraved of Antoine Lecoult sitting astride the balance bridge. 15 day power reserve, guys, but this one can speak for itself. Oh, I need to wind that one. Unfortunately, this watch started running in between the time we started speaking. And if you set a minute repeater for max effect at 1259, the inevitable side effect is it quickly runneth over. All good. How about that? Now, if you want to see what's going on there, let's take a look at the front side, because this is a modular minute repeater, and Philippe Dufour thought enough of it to knock it for being modular. The mechanism is on top of the base caliber, so you can see everything through the skeletonized dial. Let's go to the dial, and now you see I'm going to charge it, the strike barrel will spin, the rack and snail will scroll off the time, and the chimes will hit the gongs, which are welded to the sapphire by this little musical clef.
By the way, guys, that one, 60 to 70 decibels, one of the most potent repeaters you will ever hear. The IWC, by comparison, is barely audible. That thing you can hear over the din of conversation in a room. So if you're buying a minute repeater to show your friends, that's the one to get. All right, let's go from complicated, oversized, unwieldy, overblown, egomaniac watches my kind of watches, to something that's slim and fine and independent from Fleurier, Val de Travers, Parmigiani Fleurier, and the Tonda 1950 Micro Rotor. This is the PF701 Micro Rotor Auto. As you can see, the standard of finish is excellent. It's not quite Geneva Hallmark level. What I would compare it favorably against is FP Journe and Audemars Piguet, the mainstream models from those brands, albeit executed in a watch that is automatic and only 8.1 millimeters thick, and though 39 millimeters in rose gold. By the way, how much do you love those loomed Delta style hands? The watch is still just 43.5 millimeters lug to lug, meaning even if your wrist is 13 centimeters circumference, you can still wear this ultra-thin automatic, and Parmigiani makes every part of the watch. The hands, the dial, the case, the movements, the hair springs, the small parts, the balances, the wheels, the staffs, everything in the watch is made by the Parmigiani family of companies, with the exception of the strap, because as a subsidiary of Hermes, they are co-owned by Hermes, you get a Hermes strap on a Parmigiani. How gorgeous is that? And that's one that'll sit tight on any wrist size. It's got outsized presence and undersized proportions, which is a perfect combo for an all-around ultra-thin automatic dress watch. Now, jumping straight into something a little bit different, we're going to go accessible. We're going to go steel. We're going to go... German Swiss and Oris, but not the divers, not the Pro Dive, not the Divers 65, not the Aquas that we know so well, and not the Pilot's watches. We're going complicated Oris, the Arctix collection and the Arctix complication moon phase. To be fair, this one's more than just a moon phase. It's a full pointer date triple calendar moon phase. Automatic winding and 42 millimeters in steel. This is one that you can wear in the pool at 100 meters water resistant, but at the same time wear with a suit because it's a little bit more understated than the divers and it has a gorgeous almost navitimer style seven link bracelet that is wonderfully supple on the wrist it feels like a rolex jubilee i'm going to throw this one on the wrist by the way twin trigger double deployment clasp upscale stuff or is always giving you value but this is value in complications and a watch you can wear all the time Equally adept in the office or perhaps your office at sea if you like to split time between the boardwalk and the boardroom. This is an awesome option for an all-arounder. And again, for $1,400 pre-owned, you really can't do that much better. Trade in blows with more esteemed brands like Vacheron, Mont Blanc, and Chagere Le Coult in the triple calendar moon phase stakes. This is a great looking watch on my 16 centimeter wrist. 42 millimeters, just under 12 millimeters thick. The watch is also compact lug to lug. It's only about 48 millimeters lug to lug, so you can wear this down to 14 centimeters wrist circumference. Again, for 1400 bucks, there are fashion watches designed to be thrown away and smart watches designed to be recycled that cost more than this. Great deal, Oris, and honesty in watchmaking. They tell you right on their website which Salita or ETA caliber they use in any given reference. Jumping right in, BS saying, you should have started with that. You can't go back to Oris now. Well, Claudio, by the way, saying all of these watches will be in our Walnut store in Philadelphia. If you're in Philadelphia, the tri-state area, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, even Maryland or Delaware, make the trip up or down I-95 and check out the watches from this week's show. They will be in the store for an entire week until next time. Jumping back into our complications, because I love complications, Geo. Glasuta Original, from Swiss, German, to truly German, we speak of the 2003 Panomatic Lunar. This was a platinum limited edition of 200 pieces that marked the debut of the Caliber 90 duplex Swan's Neck family. Before the Pano Inverse, there was the Caliber 90 in the Panomatic series. It's a 39.5 millimeter platinum case with a gorgeous combination of black dial with metallic accents and white metal case. Nice and compact, this one features a sensational movement. A three-quarter style rotor in a Saxon style, three-quarter style plate. 
Harking back to the pocket watch era, what sets this one apart is the full balance bridge with twin black polished swan's neck fine adjustment mechanisms and hand engraved wings to the balance bridge. All screws heat oxidized in a kiln. This is as good as it gets in automatics. It gives you the visibility and the Baroque finish of the finest manual haute de movements, but it gives you all of that with the convenience of automatic winding. It gives you both romance and practicality. The romance of the moon phase, the practicality of the big date. And, of course, on the wrist, 39.5 is here to stay. This is a watch that will never fall out of fashion. 15 years after this one bowed at Basel World, it still looks the business front and back. And I should mention, it's not my only Geo. On the table, the number one memory that I carried with me when I came home from my first ever Basel World in 2016 was of this watch presented to me at the time by the then CEO of Glossuta Original, Jan Gamard. He was animated when he described the Senator Chronometer in white gold. This is a timepiece that has etched its image into my cones and rods. 42 millimeters in white gold, that's not the headline. The headline is the fact that this dial is made entirely within Geo's Forsheim Dial Factory. In Germany, they make their own dials. It is a combination of an etched and engraved dial into which the silver railroad track and Roman numerals are then filled with this silvered coloration, while the center is repeatedly varnished with blue varnish to create this wonderful granular matte texture that you see. So it is both an engraved and varnished handmade dial, in-house movement, in-house dial, and a 42 millimeter white gold case with a sensational array of polish and satin to tie it all together. The movement, caliber 5801, is a showstopper. Check out those twin mainspring barrels. Check out that planetary style differential system. Check out the double spiral hand laid onto the ratchet wheel. Let me grab my polishing cloth because this one is too good for my fingerprints. The only oils on this movement should be laid down by Glasuto watchmakers. Let's take another look. Like a longa, jewels set in chaton, fixed by heat blued screws, engine turned prolage on the base plate, Glasuta stripes across the three quarter style bridge. Why twin mainspring barrels for a power reserve that we're told by Geo is exactly 44 hours and 50 minutes, very Teutonic. But why twin mainspring barrels for even torque release from maximum wind to minimum wind? Let's get that guy back in focus there. This is a chronometer. SLME, LMET, a German fully cased up chronometer standard based on the ISO 3159. It is a fully cased chronometer test that ends with a German chronometer certificate, actually a dual certificate from both regulating authorities for this movement. Freehand engraved half bridge and a black polished swan's neck. But all of that disguises the coolest feature of this watch. First of all, power reserve with an AM PM indication at 12 o'clock. This watch has the ultimate hacking second system, putting to shame zero reset systems. Watch the seconds hand scroll past 60. When I pull this crown it's going to reset and then some did you notice that the minute hand also centered on an index you then adjust the watch with the seconds hand zeroed you adjust the watch in one minute increments it steps perfectly one minute back or forward that is the only watch i know of that does this and it is absolutely ingenious. The timepiece itself designed to evoke 19th century deck navigation chronometers as built by the forerunner of the modern day Glasuta Original, which often went by the name Alango Unzona. This watch is my favorite on the table, even considering the JLC repeater. That said, I do like quite a few of them. We saw an annual calendar chronograph with a flyback function from Richard Mille. Can we one-up Richard? Well, we can. We can go bigger, we can go bolder, and we can go blacker by means of German Swiss watchmaking in Schaffhausen. And the watch I'm about to show you blows my mind. 49 millimeters in diameter. This is the 2017 50th anniversary, one of 50, IWC, Aquatimer, Perpetual Calendar, Digital Date Month, Edition Aquatimer, 50th Anniversary. 50 pieces 
with a lug to lug dimension of 57.6 millimeters, almost 58 millimeters lug to lug, 19 and a half millimeters thick. 49 millimeters in diameter. It's made of titanium with a ceramized coating, so it has the lightness of titanium, or as light as a nearly 50 millimeter clock can be. So it has the titanium on the inside, so it can't fracture, and it has the ceramic coating on the outside. And this one has all the bells and whistles. Is it a flyback chronograph? Why, of course it is. Is it a perpetual calendar? You better believe. Is it a dive watch? Yes. Does it have a safe dive unidirectional ratcheting bezel system in tribute to the original IWC Aquatimer of 1967? Yes, it does. And all of this with a caliber 89802, which is a column wheel vertical clutch automatic winding Peloton system, by the way, in-house flyback 68 hour power reserve chronograph. This thing is adjusted in a chronometer like five positions. It's free sprung, it beats a 28.8, and it is so over the top. I'm not sure which side of this watch is crazier. Oh, and by the way, this is the time telling system that debuted on the 2017 IWC Da Vinci Digital Date Month Perpetual. So you actually have the date, you have the month, and then you have a leap year phase indicator. So you don't have a traditional perpetual calendar system, and you can see that there's a honeycomb grating through which you can actually see the disks of the system. So you have that system perpetual that can be adjusted entirely from the crown with no pushers, but it's not the traditional triple calendar moon phase. This one gives you the date, it gives you the month, it gives you the leap year cycle out of four, and that's it. This thing is crazy. It even has quick releases for the strap, so you can easily strap using just your fingernails. You can easily swap the strap to a textile or a leather. It's a crazy watch, and 50 pieces were made for the 50th anniversary of the Aquatimer. I'm putting it on the wrist just to give you an idea. It's crazy. It's too much. This is a weekend watch. This is an occasional watch. Unless you are literally the CEO of IWC and it's your business to wear your craziest watch for marketing's sake, this is probably going to be an occasional guilty pleasure. But what a pleasure. Beautiful watch, beautifully detailed in the micro facets. It's just absolutely crazy. Think of it as an Hublot, but done beautifully. Now, jumping into something a little bit more intense, uh, whew, this is a watch that does not disappoint, but God is in its details. At first glance, you don't quite know what you're looking at. So let's go over the Maitre du Temple, Chapter 3. The Chapter 3 was the third of Maitre du Temple's watches. The, the company was founded by Stephen Holtzman in 2005, and it's basically like a mini MBNF, bringing together high-end watchmakers and artisans to create special pieces. This was the Chapter 3, so Kari Voudelainen and Andreas Streller. Voudelainen was responsible mostly for the design of the caliber and the style of the watch, while Streller was designed for industrializing its production and creating its hidden complication. This watch is micro-painted. Miniature painting on the dial, it is the moon landing in 1960. Can you believe we're approaching the 50th anniversary? But you can even see the reflection in the visor, the metalized visor of the astronaut. And because this is a hidden complication, look what happens. I'm going to have to, unfortunately, use a little bit of English here. But look what happens when you, re you reveal the second time zone. I'll hide it like that and I'll bring it back. Each one of these is a little bit different, so it requires a bit more individual leverage. But you can see that there is a second time zone, as well as the image of the Earth and the Moon. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to withdraw the setting system, and I'm going to show you how there are two barrels that jump back and forth, so you can have a 24-hour format with two 12-hour barrels. And here's how it works. You see how it jumps sideways like that? And that's the main reason that this system, when it is fully engaged and operative, has a 36-hour power reserve. By the way, SHC Caliber 3, this was the third collaboration between watchmakers brought in by Stephen Holtzman from Maitre du Temple. Mostly carry, but the industrialized process to produce these bridges, plates, and small parts, as well as the hidden complication, is all Andreas Streller. They're both in the AHCI, this is double-barreled fun. 
A piece unique, how do you know? Because it says only one on the case flank. These can be highly customized to the point that several of the complicated features, including small seconds and the date, have been removed from this one to create a better canvas for the miniature custom painting. And by the way, the barrels have both been miniature painted and customized in their own right. 42 millimeters in white gold. And uh, yeah, that that is Rich Buddy is saying that is a moon watch. That is definitely a moon watch. And let me actually see if I could show you the back of the watch as I cycle through the functions, the the jump of those wheels. Let me see if I can show you the jump of the barrels from the back because to be perfectly honest, it's easier to see from the back of the watch. It happens so quickly you could easily miss it. Okay, now I'm going to show you how these barrels jump side to side from the case back. Was that cool or what? We'll do that one more time. Every 12 hours, they jump sideways. All right. Now, let's talk about a simple watch, a gorgeous watch, a classic watch, and a rare watch. Moving along in our program, we head back first to 1958, the International Geophysical Year, a year when science was paramount between nations, and the spirit of quasi-detente between scientists of the Cold War brought together some of the finest minds, ultimately resulting in a tribute to their endeavors by Jachir LeCoult, the original geophysic. In 2014, the geophysic was reborn as the tribute to geophysic. 800 pieces in steel, 300 pieces in rose gold, 58 pieces in platinum, and that's what we've got on the table tonight. 38.5 millimeters in platinum. This is the tribute to geophysic. The steel on the rose gold watch used what was in the 50s, the less common crosshair dial, but the platinum model for 2014 used the standard dial from 1958. So this is a scarcer watch in material as well as aesthetic. All of the indices are applied white gold, as are the hands. When you look at the interior of the bezel, you can see how the loom has been placed internally because the original geophysic had the radium loom placed under the acrylic crystal. Here, it's been placed on the interior of the bezel to recap and recreate that look without the same fragility when the watch is serviced. The timepiece has a caliber 898-2 movement, 43-hour power reserve, automatic winding. This one is remarkably robust, 100 meters water resistant. It looks like a dress watch. It's actually a sports watch, and it has a Milgauss-like soft iron inner cage to protect that caliber. The caliber has been adjusted in the spirit of chronometry because the original geophysic was a COSC chronometer, or was actually the predecessor of the COSC. The Bureau Officiel gave it a chronometer certificate. So this one has been adjusted via the master 1000 hours control to the standard only applied to this watch, minus one plus four seconds per day. And at 38.5 millimeters on the wrist, it has the same proportions as the original, case to bezel to lugs without being petite like the 35 millimeter original and it's an easy watch to wear comfortable rugged throw it on water resistant strap you can absolutely get this watch wet it's an all-arounder and it's stealth wealth and platinum no one will be the wiser unless they really know jlc a fun watch and one of the great modern tributes from jlc i don't always love tribute watches but this one was well done well done and rare that's the first one i've seen and I'm going to say we have more on the table because I promised you a watch with dual citizenship. And those who know the saga of the Tag Heuer caliber 1887 already know where I'm going here. But this is the current generation Tag Heuer Carrera Calibre 1887, 43 millimeter, with a gorgeous ruthenium coated dial with rose gold accents. This is a tag I can totally dig. This is the Swiss part. This is the Swiss-Japanese part. Uh, there's a very cool guy who works for FP Jour and is, he goes by the nickname Masa. And he is Swiss and he is Japanese and he's kind of an industry celebrity. Uh, this is one of the few other Swiss-Japanese celebrities in the industry. It was designed by Seiko as the 6S37 caliber. It became the Tag Heuer 1887 in 2009. What do you get? Well, you get Seiko engineering, which means bulletproof with a column wheel system for cycling the chronograph and a vertical clutch for engaging it. So you get those Seiko Grand Seiko standards, but you also get a movement that is made in Switzerland, tuned in Switzerland, and a bit better finished than the standard Grand Seiko or Seiko. So it's the best of both worlds 
bulletproof on the inside, and traditionally Swiss and traditionally Carrera with those strident and strong lugs on the outside. This is a timepiece that I think needs to be taken on its own terms as a very cool high-grade, lifetime-style luxury item. If you're a Swiss purist, you're not into this. But then again, if you know how the industry works, you realize there's already a lot of crossover in components and engineering. This is just a great watch by any standard. By the way, Masa, a very cool guy to meet. Marketing for FP Journey speaks like five languages. The coolest dude you'll ever go to a fondue restaurant, which, if you, if you visit FP Journe, visit Masa and ask him about fondue. Okay, jumping into a watch that is actually part of our next Versus. If you're going to be watching us next weekend, this will be one of our Versus watches. And we're going to finish on a high note with two crazy watches from different corners of reality. The first is the Patek Philippe Nautilus Annual Calendar. It bowed at Basel World in 2010. 40.5 millimeters in steel. It has a gradient sort of anthracite striated dial white gold in the seas annual calendar you need to adjust it only once the jump from february to march this is a fun one by the way it has a little chocolate stain unfortunately from someone who is probably indulging too much and it's a wonderful watch because despite the fact that it has all of these through fittings for the annual calendar so it has those dimple adjusters on the case side it's still 120 meters water resistant and super slim so this works as both a dress watch and a sports watch a complication and perhaps even an only watch if you're looking for a real reward but you're not necessarily a collector and you can't see yourself amassing a fleet this would be one incredible watch to adorn your wrist for the rest of your life by the way the movement as good as you imagine caliber 324 this is the 324 oh my goodness the alphabet soup it's the s it's the qa it's the LU, it's the 24H-303. You got all that? Perfectly finished. The same standards of Geneva watchmaking to which Patek has always adhered. Patek Philippe seal or no, this is Geneva Hallmark type stuff. Micro perlage on the center rotor. Circular Cote de Genève on the rotor outer. You can see perfectly aligned Cote de Genève linear across the bridges. Engine turned macro perlage on the base plate. Black polished screw heads and you can see all of those bridge edges, as well as jewel and screw countersinks lighting up, mirrored anglage on every surface. You might say, oh, well, it doesn't hack. It's a bit outdated. You know what? It's so beautiful, you won't miss that. It's handsome. It's practical. It's gorgeous inside and out. And again, this is a watch you can take swimming. And Patek even sells a rubber strap for it. So you have no excuses. You practically have to. Then again, if you're more ecologically minded and you've got a quirky streak like yours truly, you might prefer something from IWC. It all comes back to Swiss German watchmaking tonight, and I give you the Ingenieur Mission Earth Plastiki, the weirdest special edition in the history of Schaffhausen. This one is dedicated to the exploits of a David de Rothschild waste plastic catamaran that recreated some of the exploits of uh, Tor Heyerdahl and his Kontiki in 1947. This was 2010, a journey from California to Sydney, Australia, by means of a catamaran comprised partially of 12,500 recycled plastic bottles to raise awareness for ocean plastic disposal and recycling. The watch itself features purple accents, so it's a little bit Barney, I'm not going to lie. The timepiece featuring the IWC Ingenieur interlocking eye logo on a gloss white dial base, and you'll even note that the sculpted natural vulcanized rubber strap in purple has a sort of cutaway imagery that looks like the flanks of the Plastiki, the boat on which they sailed, which had cutaways so you could see the bottles of which the hull was comprised. 120 meters water resistant and big like a big pilot. This one's 46 millimeters, but because the case is cambered and curved, even though it's big pilot size, you can wear this watch on a baby wrist like mine. 16 centimeter circumference wrist and a 46 millimeter bomber of an in-house caliber steel ingenieur. This is the Plastiki, and I'm signing off. Luxury watches, like plastic, are forever, but our time tonight is through. Thank you so much for those who tuned in from far and wide. If you got up early, you stayed up late, doubly thanks. Thanks to you, thanks to my crew, time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on. Be well. Mm -hmm.